for Together We Are Road Trip Edition. Um, I just dropped off a dear friend who's visiting and I've got a nice long lazy back road drive home and figured okay I'll use my time uh, productively. And I really apologize for my video being late this week. I've been pretty sick. Um, yeah, not good, not good times lately. So this week on Together We Are, we're talking about the addiction model of EDs and whether we think um, that this is an accurate descriptor or not. I thought this was my turn. Um, what can I Left do? turn in two miles on East 120th Avenue. I love my GPS. I'd be so lost without it. Okay, so the addiction model, my answer would be yes and no. There are definitely correlates between addictions and eating disorders. And I think that the experience may be similar in a lot of ways. But the principal distinction between addictions and EDs, you need food to live. It is not a substance you can stop taking. As such, abstinence is impossible. Not eating is not a sustainable and viable way of life. With addictions, typically the substance can be abstained from and a person can survive. In our case, we have to eat, right? I mean, that's the bottom line. But a lot of features are the same. Obsession, compulsion, developing with rituals. When something becomes, when something interferes with your ability to function and complete activities of daily living is an issue. The addiction triad contains compulsive hoarding of substance, breaking the law, doing so with no medical purpose and or knowledgeable detrimental behaviors toward one's health. There are a whole bunch of aspects, but I think EDs are much different. I got a turn, so I'll be back. So I think that it does and doesn't fit. And I also think that EDs are a coping mechanism and really so are addictions generally. Um, there are organic facets of both conditions, so I guess I mean, that's a similarity. There are predispositions genetics, environment, circumstance, experiences, personality type, and those things are the same. Working in pain management, I've spoken to a lot of addicts who take these things for no medical purpose or abuse them or get addicted. And it's also a coping thing. I found an excellent article that discusses the similarities and differences of substance addictions versus eating disorders, and I'd like to share some of that. I'll also put the link and the text in the description. Substance abusers position themselves to always be in search of the substance. Fueled by cravings, the user moves toward the substance, whereas the person with the eating disorder is constantly seeking to avoid food at all costs. Recovery is markedly different with each disorder. The substance abuser must restrict or abstain from the substance. The individual with an eating disorder cannot abstain from the substance, food, since it is needed to sustain life. Abstinence for those with eating disorders involves abstinence from its symptoms, starvation, rigid dieting, binge eating, purging, body loathing, and the thoughts that accompany these behaviors. Rather than ending the relationship with a substance, the individual with an eating disorder must work to form a new enhanced relationship with food, while the substance abuser traditionally severs the relationship with a substance or substances of abuse completely, although harm reduction and moderation management strategies are gaining attention. 
Another difference is that the substance abuse recovery community instructs the individual to continue to claim the disease as an identity. Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous meetings always begin with the introduction, Hello, my name is, and I am a alcoholic or addict. For the individual with an eating disorder, a shift away from claiming the disease is important. The punishing body image mantras that accompany every glance in the mirror, every competition lost to another who is bitter, every quarter pound gained bring with them severe self-loathing and stinging criticisms. I am fat. I am ugly. I am disgusting. Often repeated hundreds of times a day for years, these become so familiar that they compromise and even overtake an individual's identity. It is essential for individuals to give up that identity and claim their authentic self or the self they can grow into over time through practice. I am grateful. I am elegant. I am flexible must all capture the essence of each individual person and reflect a part of herself that she values or he. The emphasis on the body and body image is specific to eating disorders. No such central focus is identified in substance abuse clients. Methods used to foster recovery in the substance abuse community rely on an eternally imposed locus of control. Bill Davis, 1993, finds that this approach can actually undermine internal control or empowerment in individuals with eating disorders by replicating the conditions that initially triggered the eating disorder. Davis distinguishes a power over and a power with approach to recovery. The first focuses on the domination of the disease and substance, and the second focuses on transcending or transforming the disorder through inner empowerment that relies on the power of relationship. In the second model, the therapist attempts to create a safe haven for clients in which the attachment to the therapist takes on more significance than their relationship with the disease. This model allows clients to reduce their reliance on the symptoms and work together with therapists to deal with the underlying problems that precipitated the eating disorder. While it appears that eating disorders and substance use disorders have much in common and frequently appear together in certain individuals, there is insufficient research to indicate that eating disorders can be classified as an addiction. The high number of shared characteristics and risks of the two disorders, as well as their similar downward course, suggests that further study on the implications of prevention, treatment, and recovery maintenance would be helpful to both clients and professionals. I thought this was a really good um, illustration of both similarities and differences. There's a lot more in the article regarding commonalities but I did mention several already in my segment I recorded in the car earlier. The question of the week is regarding our personal traits, which are said to be um, predisposing factors in the development of eating disorders. For me, I'm pretty much spot on textbook. Um, I have always felt a strong sense of otherness and differentness, not really fitting in, being kind of awkward socially. Um, I had a really rough childhood, I've been sexually molested, um, verbal and physical abuse otherwise. I'm a perfectionist and was definitely an overachiever in my academic years. I'm very, very sensitive and easily emotionally moved and dealt with a lot of bullying and stuff in school. I'm trying to think if there's anything else, but I think that's pretty much it. So 
that'll be it for this week. Much love, be well, and if there's something you'd like us to address, let us know. I did get a couple requests on my personal channel, and um, I will either answer them there, or the next time it's my turn to pick a topic for Together We Are, then I'll bring it up for all of us to answer. But yeah, we're here for you, we carry you all in our hearts all the time, and hope you're doing well. Hope you survive Thanksgiving if you're in the U.S. And um, hope you get through this month too and the next. Kind of a rough time for a lot of people with the holiday season and winter and stuff, myself included. So, alright guys, I'll see you next week. Bye!